This video is intended to give you a general understanding of how to perform certain adjustments or replacement procedures related to the steering system. This video, like the service manuals, is intended to be used as a reference by mechanics who have been trained to repair and service steering systems used on commercial vehicles. Prior to making a repair, refer to the appropriate service manual for additional information. Service-related information may be found on our website at www.trucksteering.com. Take all the necessary precautions to ensure both your safety and the safety of others around you. If you are not sure how to perform a procedure, consult your authorized TRW technical representative. While performing these procedures, never strike the tie rod ends, pitman arm, or other steering system components with the hammer or other such tools. Internal damage to the steering components may result. Inspection. By lightly rocking the steering wheel, observe any looseness in the two mating tapers or any movement of the stud nut. Looseness in either place requires further inspection. If either of the mating tapered parts show distortion or wear, both parts must be replaced. Make sure the wheels are straight ahead, the truck engine is turned off, and no force is being exerted on the linkage by the steering gear. To check the soundness of the joint, Use your hand to push and pull the tie rod end in and out in the direction of the ball stud. For inspection purposes, hold the linkage without twisting while applying no more than 100 pounds of hand pressure force. Measure the in and out motion on the ball stud axis with a scale. If the total in out motion on the stud's axis measures more than 1 8 of an inch or 3 millimeters with hand pressure only, then the vehicle should be taken out of service. If it moves but measures less than one eighth of an inch or three millimeters, it should be replaced at the nearest practical service center. Any movement less than one eighth of an inch or three millimeters is strictly a maintenance issue for the vehicle. Do not use a wrench or other object to obtain more leverage. Applying leverage to any linkage can cause movement, regardless of whether or not the linkage needs to be replaced. Applying leverage can also damage the linkage and cause linkage separation. During inspection, do not apply steering gear power with the engine on. This would produce normal movement, which is not an indicator of tie rod end wear. Use hand pressure only, with the engine off and the road wheels straight ahead to check for tie rod end wear. When lubricating tie rod ends, also visually inspect for cracks, breaks, or bends in the linkage components, broken clamps and gouges on tubes from rubbing parts, and missing or damaged grease fittings. Some tie rod ends are not equipped with grease fittings from the factory. However, if a grease fitting should be there and it is missing, it must be replaced. Check the seal for any form of tear or improper sealing. Also check for wear on the socket throat. Check all tie rod end connections for missing cotter pins. Tie rod end replacement. If the lash is originating from the tie rod end, it will need to be replaced. If the lash is in the tapered stud connection between the tie rod end and its mating part, both the tie rod end and the mating part must be replaced to ensure a proper fit. In order to replace the tie rod end, loosen the clamp or jam nut. Unscrew the tie rod end from the tube. Install the new tie rod end by screwing the new end into the tube. Tie rod end threads must be visible the entire length of the cross tube slot. The tie rod end is to be engaged at least one thread deeper than the end of the cross tube slot. Use the correct adjustment and centering procedures for the type of assembly being serviced. One end adjustable drag link. Position the road wheels straight ahead and disconnect the drag link at the pitman arm. Make sure the steering gear is on center by aligning the gear housing and output shaft timing marks. Loosen the clamp on the drag link and adjust the drag link length to fit the holes in the pitman arm and the axle arm. Reconnect the drag link at the pitman arm and torque the ball stud fastener. Replace the cotter pin. To center the drag link, grasp the long side of the drag link with both hands. Rotate the drag link away from you as far as it will go, then toward you as far as it will go. Center the drag link between these two points. Hold the long side in place. 
Grasp the short end of the drag link and rotate it as far toward you and away from you as it will go. Center the short end between these two points. With both ends centered, tighten the clamp. If the clamp is tack welded, do not remove the tack weld. If the clamp is free to rotate, it can be properly tightened in any position. Provided the clamp clears all other components when the wheels are turned in both directions. Lubricate the tie rod ends with OEM and TRW specified grease until you can see clean grease coming out. Torque all fasteners to OEM specifications. Two end adjustable drag link. Position the road wheels straight ahead and loosen the clamps on both ends of the drag link. Rotate the center tube until the steering gear is on center with the housing and output shaft timing marks aligned. When the marks are aligned, tighten the clamps. Remember not to remove a tack weld and to check for clearance if you change the position of a free to rotate clamp. Lubricate the tie rod ends with the OEM and the TRW specified grease until you can see clean grease coming out. Torque all fasteners to OEM specifications. One end adjustable tie rod assembly. Position the road wheels straight ahead and lift the front end of the vehicle. Loosen the clamp on the tie rod tube. Turn the hex adjuster until the toe is correct. Grasp the long side of the tie rod with both hands and rotate it in both directions, then back to center. Hold the long side in place and center the short end of the tie rod by rotating it as far as you can in both directions. Center the short end between these two points. With both ends centered, tighten the clamp. If the clamp is tack welded, do not remove the tack weld. If the clamp is free to rotate, it may be properly tightened in any position, provided there is enough clearance from other components. Lubricate the tie rod ends with OEM and TRW specified grease until you can see clean grease coming out. Torque all fasteners to OEM specifications. Two-end adjustable tie rod assembly. Position the road wheel straight ahead and loosen the clamps on both ends of the tie rod. Rotate the center tube of the tie rod until you achieve proper toe-in measurements on the front wheels. Tighten the clamps. Remember not to remove a tack weld and to check for proper clearance before repositioning a free-to-rotate clamp. Lubricate the tie rod ends with OEM and TRW specified grease until you can see clean grease coming out. Torque all fasteners to OEM specifications.